So the associative property is going to involve three numbers, A, B, and C, and they all have to be real. So basically, this is basically setting it up and saying, hey, uh, we have three numbers, A, B, and C, they're all real. What does the associative property say? And it says the following. I'm going to write it down for you, and then we'll explain it. Parentheses, A plus B plus the third number, C, is equal to A plus parentheses B plus C. All right, now a lot of students look at stuff like this and they have no idea what it means because when you first look at it, you're like, okay, so there's some parentheses here. All they did between here and here is they took these parentheses away and they put them over here. Somehow that thing is called an associative property. Okay, great. And you flip the page, you don't care. What the associative property is telling you is that you have three numbers, A, B, and C. Notice they're all added together. But when you have the parentheses here, it's forcing you because remember we talked about order of operations. When you have parentheses, you have to do what's inside the parentheses first. So when the parentheses are here, you have to add A and B together first. That gives you this answer, and then from that you to that you add the number C. Now that's going to give you some answer, okay? What it's saying is, over here, when you look at the right-hand side, you have the parentheses around here, so you must add B and C together first, whatever those numbers are, and then you get some answer there, and then you add A to it. So you see, the only thing that's different about what's happening on each side of the equal sign is here I'm adding A and B together first and then I'm adding C. Here I'm adding B and C together first and then I'm adding A. And what this associative property is telling me is in both of these cases I'm going to get the exact same answer. That's why there's an equal sign here. So what it basically is saying is that the order of adding, in this case three numbers, does not matter. In fact, the last section, we talked about another property where we had two numbers, A plus B is equal to B plus A, and we said the order didn't matter. This is just extending it to three numbers, and these parentheses are just the way to force us to add these two first, then the third one, and then these two first over here, and then this one. So in terms of an actual problem that you might see, what, uh, what it would be, it would be something like, if I had the numbers 2 plus 7, and then I add the number 1, this... Uh, property is basically telling me is that this is the same thing as 2 plus 7 plus 1. You see, uh, I have three numbers here. I have the number 2, the number 7, the number 1. The number 2, the number 7, the number 1. They're in the same order. It's just on this side, I have to add the 2 plus 7 first. So 2 plus 7 is going to give me 9 plus 1. On the right-hand side, the 2 is going to hang along for the ride till later. I must do the parentheses first. 7 plus 1 is 8. Now what happens on the left-hand side? 9 plus 1 is 10. On the right-hand side, 2 plus 8 is 10. So this is just simply a mathematical way of writing down something that you already know. When you take any three numbers, it does not matter the order in which you add these numbers. You can add numbers in any order you want. 10 plus 9 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 9 plus 10. You're going to get the same answer either way. This is just a mathematical way of writing that down, and we call it the associative property of addition. All right. when we write it down in terms of adding. Now, we also have um, the associative property of, um, let me go ahead and draw a little line here, associative property of multiplication, which is exactly the same thing. If we take A times B and then we multiply times the number C, we're going to get the same answer as if we had uh, B times C multiplied first, because here we have to do B times C first and then multiply by A. Here we have A times B and then we multiply by C. So an example here would be, for instance, with numbers, if uh, A was 3 and B was 4 and C was 2, then this uh, guy is telling me that it's going to be the exact same thing as this over here. The only difference is, here I do this first, so 3 times 4 is going to give me 12, and then I'm going to multiply by the 2, and on this side I'm going to have... 4 times 2 is 8. I'm going to do that first. So 12 times 2 on the left is 24, and on the right-hand side, 8 times 3 is 24. So the only thing it's basically saying is that the order of multiplication does not matter. It doesn't matter. So if I had to boil down the associative property 
in terms of something easy to understand for multiplication and addition. All I would tell somebody is, hey, if you're adding three numbers together, or any number of numbers together, really, because it goes beyond three numbers, it doesn't matter the order in which you do it. And if you multiply three or, in fact, more numbers together, it doesn't matter the order in which you do it. You're going to get the same answer either way. These, these things here are just a mathematical way of writing that down. All right, now we need to switch gears a little bit, and we need to talk about um, some other properties that are a little easier to understand, um, but they're a little bit trivial. Like you're going to see some of these and you're going to say, wow, this is so dumb. But you have to kind of realize that in math, things need to be written down as, as like rules and framework. And then as you move on, you get into more detailed and complicated things that aren't obvious. And so then you build upon the simple things to make the complicated things. So these are called equality properties. Equality property. We actually have three of them we're going to talk about. And I guarantee you, each one of these you're going to look at and say, well, these are easy. Well, they are easy. Okay, so the first one is called the reflexive property. Reflexive property. All right, and what it basically says is if you have some number A, it's equal to some number A. <laughs> I know that sounds really crazy, but what it's basically saying is if you have some number, it's equal to itself. Okay, and that is like probably the most trivial thing I'll even show you in this class, but it has a name and it's called reflexive property. Basically what it's saying is if I have a pile of apples with three apples in it, and then I have a, you know, another pile of apples with three apples in it, well, those both represent the quantity three and they're both equal to each other. Numbers can be equal to each other. A three is equal to three is a valid thing to say. That's all this equality property is saying. And it's something that you know and it's something that's trivial, but it has a, a name in algebra and so we call it that. All right, the next one that we have, so that was all that we have to talk about for that. The next thing we have is called um, the symmetric property. All right, the symmetric property, let me go ahead and underline this. Uh, the symmetric property says the following. If A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. So you have two numbers, A and B. One of them we call A, one of them we call B. If they happen to be, if A happens to be equal to B, then we can turn it around and say that B is equal to A. And this is so trivial that it's just not even, you know, worth talking about anymore. It's something that you already know. If you have two things and they both represent the same number, right, A, we say that A is equal to B. Well, you can flip it around and say B is equal to A. The easiest thing to say here would be if A was a, a box of pencils with 10 pencils and B was a box of oranges with 10 oranges, they're different things, but the quantities are the same. Then we say A, the number of pencils, is equal to B, the number of oranges. Well, we could easily turn that around and say B, the number of oranges, is also equal to A, the number of pencils. Very, very simple, simple stuff. Um, trivial things, but we have a word for it. It's called the symmetric property because it's symmetric. It's like a mirror is here. A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. Now the last one we're going to have here is a, a little more interesting, I think. It's called the transitive property. And you'll use this one, especially in geometry, down the road, property. Transitive property. That states the following. If a is equal to B, and B is equal to C, some third number C, then the number A is also equal to the number C. Make sure you understand what this is saying. This involves three numbers. We say that if A is equal to B, and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. Right? That's basically all it's saying is that uh, since they're both, since A is equal, since A and C are both equal to the same intermediate number B, then A and C can be said to be equal to one another. All right. So the easiest thing to think about here is, you know, I guess you could talk about fruit. I'm not really totally sure. But let's say you have three, you know, oranges here. We call that the number A. And then we have over here some limes in the middle. We call that number B. Well, since they both have three, here's the oranges uh, over here, and here's the limes over here, but they each have three of them. So we can say that A is equal to B, right? Then over here we have some other grapefruit or something like that. We have three of these guys and we call that C. Then we also know separately that B is equal to C. So if you cover this up over here, we know that B is equal to C and separately we know that A is equal to B. Then without knowing anything else, we can say because of this guy, then this is equal to this. 
we can say then a is equal to c. Okay. In other words, a and c each have three because they're both equal to this intermediate guy called b. So these are the three equality properties. They're very simple. Um, a is equal to itself a. Uh, if a is equal to b, then b is equal to a, like a mirror image. And then if a is equal to b and b is equal to c, then a is equal to c. Are you going to use these every day of your life? No, you won't. But understanding the theory of algebra, you'll probably be asked on a test somewhere uh, what some of these things are. It's useful to know. And as we build our skills forward, you will reference some of these guys um, as we move on to more complicated topics. So follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue pushing forward right now. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.